This video is about the Generate Attributes operator. This operator creates new attributes within example sets. There's a lot of detail associated with this operator, which is covered in a number of videos. This is the first video covering the basics. We'll cover creation of attributes that have the same value for each example within an example set. We'll also look at creating attributes based on other attributes for the same example. We'll look at types of attributes, the allowable characters in names and values. We'll also look at functions and we'll also look at the parameters use, standard constants and keep all. So we'll start by looking at a simple process. So this process simply makes some data basically an example set with three attributes and a label and this is fed to a generate attributes operator where 10 new attributes are created and what we'll do we'll let's run it and we'll see what happens so what you're seeing here this is the original data so as, as I said there were three regular attributes and one label and then the result of that is the following. If I toggle between these, you'll see that uh, 11 new attributes have been created. And the way you do that is by defining rules in the function descriptions parameter to the generate attributes operator. So if I click this button here, these are the rules by which the new attributes are created. Basically the name is given here on the left and in the right the, the, an expression is given which lets the, uh, the value be calculated. One thing to remember about the generate attributes operator is that there is an implied loop through all of the examples in the example set. So this instruction to create an attribute with a with some sort of description here that is applied to all of the examples within the example set. The available possibilities that you can type in here are very large and you can see a little button here if I click that you can see functions can be placed into the uh, dialog box so you can have an extremely large possible number of things you can do we won't go into functions in much detail at the moment and we'll leave that for a later video okay so what I will do is I will run the process and I will show the statistics view of the example set alongside this parameter view here and we'll go through each attribute that's been created one by one to help explain where it comes from so what I'll do is I'll run the process um, we'll look at the statistics view for the attributes and I'll bring that up alongside these function descriptions here and we can see how each one is calculated. Before we do that I'll just touch on these two parameters here. New standard constants, in my experience this seems to make no difference at all. The help implies that various things like e or pi or i the square root of minus one can be made available or not depending on the value of this in my experience it makes a difference so I'm just going to leave it checked on the keep all parameter I'll very quickly show that if I turn keep all to off what that will have the effect of doing is removing any attributes that aren't explicitly created in the function descriptions box here so again if I bring this up these attributes will be created any pre-existing attributes will be removed. So if I run that, what you can see here is here's the before data. Now the after data does not have any of the regular attributes in it. So as usual, the special attribute, the label, is retained. But the non-special, the regular ones, are removed from the final example set. OK. But I'll, I'll, I'll set keep all to on so that we have something to refer to. OK, so what I'll do is I'll run the process will eliminate the pre data let's look at the statistics view for the data after the the run what i'm going to do is detach that and 
make it so we can see it by scrolling down I can eliminate all but the new ones so those are the new attributes I've created if I click this button here we can see the descriptions I'll scroll that over so we can fit it in so it looks okay okay so the stop the first one is a number so this is just a number now all I've done is the name is a number and the expression I've typed in here is 1.1 now rapid minor interprets that as a number so sure enough it gets interpreted as a real number and it has value 1.1 each of the hundred rows will have the value 1.1 set to the value for a number the next attribute a nominal is as is simply um, a string and it, that's signaled by putting the uh, the value within double quotes as you can see there and again that's um, that value is applied to all 100 examples in the example set third one is a binomial and if you set true or false note there are no quotes here then rapid minor interprets that as a binomial and this is showing that there are zero false and I'll just move that to the right and 100 true uh, this the fourth one nominal containing reserved characters which is this here it sometimes you might want to embed a double quote or a backslash inside your text perfectly possible you might want to do that the way to do it is you escape the backslash or the double quote with a backslash so you can see here if I zoom in to that there you'll see you'll see uh, the double quote is escaped with a single backslash there there's then a backslash escaped with another backslash then there's another double quotes escaped with a backslash and then finally the final double quotes which encloses the entire string so the end result of all that is that string there where you can sort of see the helpful text the next one this is a um, a nominal but it has all of the non numeric non alpha alphabetic characters so this shows the full list of the ones I could make work inside the double quotes here so all these are allowed values in a nominal I have to say it's unlikely you'd use those but if you did then I guess that's here for reference now macros in a later video there are certain combinations of these characters that were, are interpreted as a macro so that needs to be carefully thought through and by and large that's the only things you can't have are backslash or double quote but as you've seen above you can escape them to make them appear so another attribute here is this shows all of the um, allowed characters that you can have in the name of the attribute I suspect it would be very unlikely you'd do this but here it is for completeness um, bearing in mind that you can have a macro in the ma in the attribute name which gets expanded during uh, runtime but if you really wanted to have square brackets and so on I guess you could this next attribute is called a number as a nominal so by enclosing the number one in quotes rapid minor treats that as a nominal this next attribute is called a nominal as a number now what I'm now doing is I'm using a function to parse another attribute now you'll notice a number as a nominal that is actually the name of this attribute here so here's an important point that in a single generate attributes operation you can actually use names of attributes you've created above where you are or obviously if this attribute already exists then you can just use it so essentially what's happening here is that a number as a nominal it's not in quotes it's therefore taken as an attribute name and it's used as whatever value for the example you're currently on is used as input to in this case this function called parse if I click on the button here parse is part of the text group so if I put my mouse over parse you get some help will pop up okay there are as you can see a lot of functions they'll be covered in later videos but what this will do is it will take the nominal value one and it will turn it into a number and sure enough a nominal as a number is a real has value one now rapid minor always creates as far as I can tell real numbers when it finds numbers and it, it doesn't create integers 
it's up to a later step to turn the real into the integers. Those can be done with other operators. So next when we get into a more complicated formula, this is the power formula and it's using some of the uh, reserve mathematical symbols e, i and pi. I was quite gratified to see that the square root of minus 1 is a perfectly valid symbol you can use. Anyway, what this is doing is raising e to the power i times pi and adding 1 to it, which as every schoolboy knows is Euler's identity and that should be 0. Sure enough, there it is. So that's quite interesting. Um, and this final, um, these final two attributes are really um, proving certain things about um, how you can do calculations based on more than one attribute. So what this is doing, the attribute called calculation, what it's doing is it's cubing at 1, which is a pre-existing attribute if you remember, squaring at 2 and then just having at 3 raised to the power 1, which is at 3, and it's adding those together to produce a number. And you can see calculation, well, OK, there's its min. If I move this to the right, you can see max. So if I were to go back to the uh, data view, you'd see that um, each of the examples had a different value because at 1, at 2, and at 3 are, in general, always different. I'll do that in a moment. And the final attribute here is essentially subtracting the calculation I've just done from the label. Now, as it happens, I know how the label is created from the data, and it is basically this formula. So what I'm expecting to see is that the result of this will be zero for all of the uh, attributes called remainder, which is, as you can see, if I move this to the right, min, max, zero, so therefore it's zero. But um, if we go back to the data view, you'll see that finally that the calculation attribute has a, has a different value for each example based on this formula. If I go back to the data view, sure enough, um, you can see that if I scroll to the right, I can do this, I can move calculation over to here. You can see now that at 1, at 2, and at 3, uh, you could, as an exercise for the reader, you could do the calculation. You should get that number there if you cube that, square that, and add that to it. And as you can see, each example has a different value for the attribute calculation and it just so happens to be the same as the label because I knew what I was doing and um, this essentially illustrates the, the, the basics therefore of, of this operator. So what I'll leave with, uh, I'll go back to the statistics view and I will bring up the definition of the parameters, the attributes rather, and leave it like so. So you can just have a final view.